All right, so 2.5 and 2.6. These two last two sections have to do with absolute value. And so we're going to learn all about absolute value. First of all, 2.5 is equations. Then we move on to 2.6, which is inequalities. You'll sort of see something that we actually did in 2.4 as um, relevant to 2.6. Anyways, let's go for it. Uh, the whole definition, definition of absolute value, what does it mean? I took this from a different textbook, actually from the previous textbook, because I didn't think ours did a good enough way to define absolute value. So absolute value is defined to be the distance from that number back to zero, or you can say from the zero to that number. So if you say the absolute value of five, which you're really saying, what's the distance from zero to five? On a number line, you can kind of tell, here it goes, zero there, five there, so the different distance would be technically five. If you go over here, what's the absolute value of negative three? You're really saying, what is the distance from zero to negative three? And so if we look at that, the distance from zero to negative three is still three. So you see how the positive stay positive and the negative just turns into a positive, right? Because you're just looking at distance. You're <coughs> seeing and distance always has to be positive. Okay, cool. Just so you know, that's the definition of absolute value. It's in terms of distance, therefore, it is always zero or positive number. Okay, but let's go on to solving, because we want to solve these equations. We know the definition. <clears throat> so I'll start off very easy. X absolute value of x is equal to six. And if you think about it, even before we start answering the problem here, because we're gonna we're gonna use the same concept for number two. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what can x be if we take the absolute value of it and it'll give you six? So what number here? Let's kind of do it like a guess and check sort of thing. What would I put in here if I take the absolute value it would give me six? Three. Obviously six, right? Is there another number that would work? Yeah, negative 6. So if we do this, notice what we just did. We just solved the problem. But this is the process we're going to use right here. We're going to use this exact same process. We're going to say, okay, we're going to say that number has to equal this positive value here, or this number is going to give us the negative of this number here. Good there? And we're done. Okay, we're good there? Let's go over here. We're going to use the same process here. So 2x plus 1, absolute value of that is equal to 11. So that means 2x plus 1 equals 11. <coughs> Bless you. Or that little 2x plus 1 could ha actually have given us a negative 11. Because if we would have took the positive of that, we would have wound up with the 11 at the end. We good? So we use the process from number one, or the answer from number one, to give us a process for number two. Sweet. Let's go for it. We just have to solve each one of these. So subtract one, subtract one. Go ahead. You can stay ahead of me. Here, minus one, minus one, <coughs> twelve, divide by two, divide by two, x equals negative six, voila. <coughs> okay, so let's back go back over here. And so what we say here is we uh, say either five is an answer or negative six is an answer, but here's the way we're gonna answer it in the back of the book. We're going to say 5 comma negative 6, because technically both of those are answers. 5 is a correct answer, and negative 6 is a correct answer. This is the way the book does it. Uh, other math textbooks, what they'll do is they'll say, they'll say it like this. Okay. And then it is customary in, in math to write the smallest number first, then the larger numbers. 
So technically should have been negative 6 and 5, but it doesn't matter as long as you have both answers there. So let's go back up to number 1 here. Let's finish this off completely. So the answer technically should be 6, negative 6. All right, and again, if you want to write it like this, if you want to write it like this, that's fine. Either, either of those are just fine. Okay, <clears throat> there's a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a little trick here, and I want you guys to notice it because we're going to need it for the reasoning for the next section. Okay, so this 2x plus 1, notice what we did is we put a positive 11 here, and then we put a negative 11, but that's technically not true or at least we're missing a step here. Because it's not that the 11 becomes a positive or a negative, it's the fact that this piece right here is negative or positive. We good? So whenever we talk about 2x plus 1, it's really this right here. It's, it's the fact that 2x plus 1 is positive this time, okay? And then what we do is we say that 2x plus 1 could have been negative. There's my negative. Let me erase that little positive because it looks disturbing. Okay, but do you see this little negative right here? Well, technically we did this. The missing step here is that you technically should be dividing through by negative 11. Ah, negative 11. Here, and then you would have been dividing through by negative. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. It is negative 1. So dividing through by negative 1 here and dividing through by negative 1 here. See how the negatives disappear and then you're left with that negative 11. So there's a, actually a division by negative 1 here that we don't sort of do because why do extra steps if you don't have to? We're good? In the older algebra textbooks, they actually made you do this. Yeah, they made you do it this way and then divide through by negative 1 to get you this and then do the rest of the problem. Okay, why do we need this or to know it? We'll need it for 2.6, okay, to make sense of it. All right, of course, fractions and everything else, all the good stuff here. Okay, so we do have to split it off in two different pieces. Before we can split anything off, we have to get the absolute value all by itself on one side. Cool, so what should we do? Add one to both sides before we do any splitting whatsoever. So I got myself an absolute value of 2 fifths x plus 7. Now is not equal to, hey, 3. <coughs> Be sure you'll have these on the exam. So careful, make sure you do that. Common mistake on the exam is for students not to move the one over, then they're all confused. Okay, so now we got it. Absolute value all by itself. Perfect. Let's go split it off. So 2 fifths x plus 7 equal to a 3. Or that 2x plus 7, 2 fifths x plus 7 could be equal to a negative 3. And can you solve each of those? All right, I'm going to add seven. I'm sorry, subtract seven from both sides gets me a negative four. Multiply by five on both sides gets me a two x is equal to negative twenty, and then divide by two. Hopefully, you guys got x equals negative ten for the first one.
All right. Uh, next one, subtract 7, gives you 2 fifths x is equal to negative 10 this time, multiplied by 5 over 2. Again, this is a quick way of multiplying through by the reciprocal. Let's see, 2 goes into negative 10, negative 5 times, and negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. Everybody good there with those two answers? You could have done it a different way as well. You could have multiplied through here by 5 completely first. Then you would have left with 2x plus 35 is equal to 15. Eventually, you still would have wound up with a negative 10, either or. Okay, so that works, that works. So the answer is negative 10 comma negative 25. Both of them work. The only time that this would would sort of scratch one of them out is when we're doing word problems. Typically what happens is, um, remember how distance can't be negative, time can't be negative? So if, let's say we had a positive 10 and a negative 25, <coughs> we cancel off the negative 25 because it doesn't make sense for the word problem and we just leave the 10, we just use the positive value. That's kind of typical. Okay, so there's one example of that. Now let's go to a sort of weird example here. This one here, absolute value of 3x minus 1. All right, so I want you guys to notice something very, very careful here. First of all, is the absolute value all by itself on one side? Yes. Is it equal to a positive number? No. Here's our problem. Can an absolute value, remember absolute value makes everything positive, right? Can an absolute value ever equal a negative 5? I don't think so, huh? So in this case, a positive number would never equal to negative 5, therefore the answer is no solution and it's right away. So careful. Don't do a lot of work for nothing. So the math would actually work out. You can actually do the math. It'll give you an answer, but those answers will the answer will not be correct at all. So it can never start out with a negative number. Or equal to a negative number. Mm -hmm. You have to say that does not exist right away. Okay, and then what happens if we got two absolute values equal to each other? There's the other scenario. Mm -hmm. I used to torture my high school kids. I used to teach high school because technically, wouldn't you gonna think this could be positive and this could be positive, right? They could both be positive. It could be the fact that this is negative and this is positive, right? That's case number two. Could be that this is positive, this is negative, right? <coughs> or it could be that both of them are negative. So there's actually four different possibilities here, right? Let me write it out just so we understand here. So it could be, could be that one side is positive and the other side is positive. Could be one side is negative, this side's positive. This side's positive, this side's negative, or it could be that one side is negative, or both of them are negative. I'm good there? And again, these are, these are sides of an equation, okay? But real quick here, if you were to divide this guy here, let's say this is negative, this is negative, whatever the expression is, right? If you divide this guy by negative one, this side by negative one, what happens? Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So really, these two are exactly the same, right? You're going to get the same answer both ways. You just technically, in a sense, dividing through by a negative. And then this one, if you divide this by a negative, aren't you going to get this one here? <coughs> so really, instead of four different possibilities, there's only really two different possibilities. Either they're both the same sign or you got different signs. So I used to torture my high school kids and I used to make them do all four possibilities and I just kind of let them do it until someone in the class finally said Mr. H <coughs> you know the first case and the last case we always get the same answer like that's cool 
And then Mr. H, the second and third cases, we always get the same answer. Like, that's cool. Okay, good. Okay, now we can go down to just two. I love torturing high school kids. It was great. Okay, so I'm not going to torture you guys. So we're going to say this here. What happens if both of them are positive or both of them are the same sign? Or, and then pick one. It doesn't matter which side you pick, left or the right. 2x plus 1 is equal to a negative x plus 2. and then have to solve each one of those cases. So I'll give you guys a little bit of time. <coughs> All right, I'm going to start as well here. So subtract x from both sides here, get x plus 1 is equal to 2. Subtract 1 from both sides, you get x is equal to a positive 1. On the other side, you got to distribute this whole negative here. So negative times x, negative x. Negative times 2 is minus 2. So in this case, how about we add x to both sides? Leaves us with a 3x plus 1 over here. Still a minus 2 on this one. And so, let's see, subtract 1 from both sides gets you a negative 3. Divide by 3 gets you x equals negative 1. So there are my two answers that work. Either a 1, if you were to plug in there, would make both sides equal to each other or make a solution. Or a negative 1 would also make that solution. All right, and again, how do we write it? We're going to write 1 comma negative 1. <clears throat> All right, out of curiosity, how many got that before? I did a little bit less, right about half. Okay, next one starts off exactly the same way, except there's a little bit of a twist to it here. So I'll let you guys try it yourself first, see what happens. The hint is you're only going to get one answer, not two answers. All right, let's start here. So again, the first case, if they're both positive. The second case, if one of them is negative. I'll just pick the second one being the negative case. All right, the weird stuff is here, when you start subtracting the x out on both sides, they both cancel. In this case, 3 does not equal a negative 6, so therefore this does not have a solution. At least on the first equation, it doesn't have a solution, right? Just that one. We still have the other one to deal with. And so in this one here, x plus 3 stays, but negative of a x is negative x. Negative negative 6 is a positive 6. It's a little bit of work there. Adding x to both sides gets you a 2x this time. Subtracting 3 from both sides, 6 minus 3 is a 3. Divide by 2 eventually gets you a 3 halves as the final answer. And then that is the only answer. So in this case, it's just going to be 3 halves. OK, so those are equations with absolute values. Got a few people still writing stuff down. I'll wait a little bit. Jumping to 2.6. Now we got absolute values, but now we have inequalities. So, how do we deal with inequalities? And it looks
looks like we have eight problems to go. I think we should be able to finish right before break time here, but let's take a look at this here. Let's understand this first here. Whenever we were dealing with equations, um, what we typically found was it's the distance away from zero, right? So if you say absolute of x is equal to seven, you're saying what number is seven units away from zero? Obviously, positive seven, right? And a negative seven. So normally what we get, we get two answers. Okay, now let's take a look at these two here. Little, they're way different from each other. You say a is less than five, but you're saying the distance away from a is going to be less than five. So you're including anything up to a distance of five. So if we talk about from zero, you're saying anything up to this one. Hey, doesn't that look like an and statement? Is that right? Does that look like an and statement from 2.4? And and statements, we can write like this. We can say negative 5 is less than a is less than 5. We good? Let me include some other stuff the book does not include. Let me change this up just real quickly here to less than or equal to 5, just so we see it. What's the only change that's going to happen here? Brackets. You're going to have yourself some brackets, that's all. So in this case, if there was a number line like this, whoa, a little straight, more straight number line than that. All you, the difference here would have been a bracket here, a bracket there, and still everything put in the middle, like this. How about negative 5 less than or equal to a less than or equal to 5? We're good there? There's a change. There. I wish they would have showed that. I don't know why they didn't. The other way is this. How about if we say the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to 4? Well, you're trying to say this. You're trying to say the distance away from y is going to be either 4 or bigger. So notice you got this little gap in the middle now. So you're saying the distance from 0 to negative 4, it has to be, the distance has to be bigger than this. So if you're at negative 5, the distance would be bigger, right? If you're at negative 6, the distance will be bigger than 4. So absolute value of y greater than or equal to 4, but this looks like an or statement with a little gap in the middle. So the answer to it would be y less than or equal to negative 4, or y greater than or equal to 4. Let's do the one that they don't include, because you can have this one too. <coughs> Bless you. Absolute value of y is greater than 4. What's the difference here? Because that symbol, tell me if you guys agree here, that means we just have parentheses now, is that right? And this goes this way. And parenthesis here goes this way. But it's an or statement. So y is less than negative 4, or y is greater than positive 4. Again, getting in the understanding here, just to make sure we, get, we got it. So if you have an absolute value with the less than symbol, or absolute value with the less than or equal to symbol, technically it's an and statement. If you have an absolute value that's a greater than symbol, or greater than or equal to symbol, it's going to be an or statement. We're going to treat it as such. Also very important, notice this little 4 changes to a negative 4 over here, right? And then the 4 stays here, so we're going to use this same process right here. jump to this one. This is on, let me jump to the page number so we have it here. It's on page 132. Page 132 just sort of gives you something to refer back to when you do these here. So absolute value of x is less than 3. We're going to use an and statement. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the c value absolute value of x is less than c. We're going to take the opposite of our c value. We're going to couch it between two less than inequalities. We're going to put that, whatever this expression is, we're going to put in the middle. Right there. <clears throat> in this case, the absolute value of x is greater than c. What we're going to do is we're going to take the x value, 
invert our inequality, put a negative c value there, or x is greater than positive c. And then remember, all we're really doing is just the stuff from the graph we just learned, right? It makes sense from the graph. Therefore, we're going to use it as our process. All right, let's go for it. <coughs> Absolute value of 3x minus 1 is less than 8. So real quickly here, is this an and statement or an or statement? <coughs> it's an and statement. We're including, we're going, the distance away from here is going to be less than 8. So we write it, we're going to put negative 8, less than symbol, 3x minus 1 without the absolute values now, less than positive 8. Again, this is the short way of writing and. <clears throat> and again, if you want to sort of go back to it, Mr. H, that what is that again? The, this is this one right here. Or if you like, it's this one here. It converts into something that looks like that. Because we can't compute stuff with absolute value. We've got to be able to change it into non-absolute value form. <coughs> okay, once we've got, hey, I think we know this from 2.4. What do we do here? Add one to both sides, or all three sides. That's negative 7, that's a 3x now, that's a 9. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. Perfect, there's my inequality notation. From this, can you graph it? And from this, can you give me interval notation? So the graph looks like negative 7 thirds would be about right here. 3 would be here, and let's see, parentheses or brackets? Absolutely. And again, it's an and statement, right? So the number that I want is couched between negative 7 thirds and 3. It's an and statement, and again, and statements combined together in the middle. Interval notation. Here it is. Let's just, let's go with it here. So parentheses, negative seven thirds, then up to three, and then we close off that parenthesis. There it is. One for you guys to practice. Go for it from beginning to end. <laughs> On the test, I almost want to say for sure, for sure, it's going to give you interval notation and the graph. It's going to give you both. All right, I'm going to go for it here. So again, it's an and statement. I'm going to change it into a negative 13 on the left-hand side. Same symbol, 2x plus 5. Same symbol and a 13. Good there? Short notation for and. Yeah. 
All right, and from here, subtract 5 from both sides. Hopefully you finished it off already here. I got a negative 18 less than or equal to 2x, which is less than or equal to 8. Divide by 2 on all three sides, and I get a final answer of negative 9 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 4. So graph goes something like this. Now you got brackets on both sides and bunch to the middle. Careful, make sure you have the brackets there. And then the interval notation answer, negative 9, 4, All right, good, good. Jumping to this one, number three. And again, you can go ahead of me if you like. I see a couple of you guys are already going ahead of me. That's fine. So I got absolute value of x minus 7 is gre ooh, greater than 5. That's an or statement. Perfect. So here's the way I'm going to write it. Again, back to the previous slides here. How do we write it? We write it as x minus 7. We switch our inequality to negative 5 or x minus 7 greater than 5. So notice on the first one, x minus 7, switch inequality, opposite sign, or x minus 7, and leave everything else exactly the same. And again, where does that come from? Again, I'm going to just real quick refer back to just to make sure it comes from this whole concept here. If you say y is absolute value of y is greater than four, so the distance is greater than four, then what you're really saying is you have an or statement on your hands, going off different directions. Comes from understanding the graph. All right, let's go for it here. So at seven, at seven, see if you guys can finish it off before me. That's going to be a two, or. At 7, at 7, it's going to be x greater than 12. The graph of this guy. Let's see, the 2 would be about right here somewhere. The 12 would be all the way over here. And I got x is less than 2, so I got myself a parenthesis that's going down this way. And x is greater than 12, that means I got a parenthesis that's going up. All right, final answer, how about uh, negative infinity to 2, remember this little union thing, union, 12 to infinity. Okay, and I want to show you what, what does this actually mean, what, what, is, what is this saying? x minus 7, absolute value is greater than 5. The 7 here is our little middle number. We, I'm going to mess around with the graph here just for a little bit here. This is what we're saying. 7 is the middle number. That's where we're starting off. So the distance away from 7, bless you, has to be greater than 5. So notice, if I went 5 this way, I wind up with the 2, right? But the distance has to be greater than that. So a 1 would work. 0 would work. Negative 1 would work. Notice the distance. The distance now is greater than five. This is the little greater than part. On the other side, we're saying also this: the distance here has to be greater than five on this side. So, seven plus five is twelve, and the distance has to be bigger than that. So, thirteen works. Fourteen works. Fifteen works, because now the distances are bigger than the five itself. We good? So this are kind of spreading off two different directions. Okay. For you guys to practice, and of course, with a fraction in it somewhere. Somewhere along the line.
again, I'm going to start here, kind of look up when you... want to, or if you get stuck. So I have 5x minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 4, or 5x minus 6 is greater than or equal to positive 4. So hopefully you guys got that set up. Working our way through, I got a 2 here, divided by 5 here, divided by 5 there. I got x less than or equal to 2 fifths, or Going over here, adding 6 to both sides gets you a 10. Should go like this. Divide through by 5, divide through by 5. We've got x is greater than or equal to 2. And again, the graph 2 fifths would be over here this time. Uh, positive 2 here, so x less than or equal to 2 fifths means I got a bracket this time. Going off to the left with arrows, x greater than or equal to a positive 2, which means I've got a bracket, and going off to the right with arrows. All right, final answer in interval notation, negative infinity up to 2 fifths with a bracket union, bracket 2 to infinity. All right, jump to number five here. All right, just like equations here, before we do anything else, we have to get the absolute value by itself on one side. So we're going to add two to both sides. Perhaps 4x plus 3 now it becomes less than 7. So, and or or, what do you guys say? And. It's an and. So, therefore, negative 7 less than 4x plus 3 less than positive 7. Some of you guys are done already here, so I'm going to finish it off here. Subtract 3 from both sides gives you negative 10, less than 4x, less than 4. Dividing through by 4 each of the sides, reducing our fraction as much as we can. So negative 5 halves, less than x, less than 1. And the graph should look somewhat like this. And finally, interval notation as our final answer. On the homework, they sort of go back and forth between inequality notation, which is this one here, and interval notation, which is this one here. They'll just sort of bounce between the two, depending on what the directions say. So they want you to be familiar with both of them. Number six, this slight little twist here. I'll give you a hint, something about dividing through by a negative number. See what happens there.
All right, and or, or what do you guys say? Or is good, is good yep. So 6 minus 3x less than negative 15. Or 6 minus 3x greater than positive 15. Okay, you guys try yours, and I'll try to finish this one as well here. Again, don't forget you're going to divide through by a negative 3, and if you do so, you have to switch your inequality. So x is greater than 7, or x is less than negative 3. The graph of it will look somewhat like this is greater than 7, so we have this going this direction. x is less than negative 3, we go like that, and then how about a Interval notation, negative infinity to negative 3, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, 7 off to positive infinity. Got a few people still writing it out, so I'll wait just a little bit. Other people erasing and then putting in the correct answer, that's good too. <coughs> okay, and let's go for it. So number seven and number eight are the two tricky ones. Let's take a look at those. <coughs> kind of careful here, this is more concept than actually mathematics here. So we've got this little problem. See, all the way at the end, you got yourself a negative two. So you got to think about this here. Let's see, when is an absolute value is going to be less than negative 2? Yeah, because this guy's going to be always, this guy's going to be a positive number, right? So when is a positive number less than negative 2? <coughs> I don't think so. That's going to be a no solution. That doesn't make sense for that to even take place. And again, if you do the mathematics behind it, if you start treating this as an and statement, start working out things, you'll get to some kind of answer, but it'll be wrong. You also got to think about it before you do it. Okay, that's number seven and number eight. Trickier one. Ah. Think about what the sign means, though. Think of what the inequality means. So this guy's going to be a positive number, right? 
When is a positive number bigger than negative 8? When does that happen? Perfect. Positive number is always going to be bigger than a negative 8, right? It always happens. Okay, so there's the book answers all real numbers. All real numbers. And then the way you can sort of write it in, in interval notation, you go like this. You go from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, which means uh, the whole entire number line is filled in. you got everything filled in. All right, and with that, we have finished 2.6.